Hello, welcome. <laughs> so I muted everybody. So as everybody comes in, you are muted, I believe. And if not, hey, Bob. Oh, I can't even hear anybody. <laughs> All right, so I muted everybody, so I can no. Can you hear me? Yes, I muted everybody, so when they come in, everybody's muted. I'm looking to set it up so that, I'm um, just looking here. Okay, so, sweet. Is everybody doing good? <laughs> All right. I don't know if Tom's on here. See, he should be on any sick in. What's that? Did you get my message this afternoon that I sent through to you with that post from the Freedom Fighters? Oh, on the business thing. Yes. Yeah, I'll have to look at it. Is it yeah, check that out because I want to know if it's real. Oh. And if oh. we can all do it. Oh, yeah. I have some of my people are working. That's Cheryl Morley. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll check it out. Yeah, but is it company-wide? Oh, I That's see. What okay. Yeah. Thank you again for this morning. You are so welcome. <laughs> oh. Did you want to get, who wants to get? Um... Hey, miss. Hello, Ken. You, 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 you kept saying something about uh, being muted. Does that mean I'm not to have any children or did you say yeah. muted? You are muted. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. So if anybody, I'm, I'm going to be finalizing all the Eric Worry tickets. You know, Tom, we have a bunch of Eric Worry tickets. So if you guys, um, if somebody wants to get an Eric Worry ticket, we have them for like 300. I think they're almost double that. And I'm going to be finishing all that up. I have several more orders that people have ordered. So I, I think we still have some left if you guys are interested. And I will put the link up here in just a second. So if you want to get on and if you want to buy some. And let me see. All right, and we got Bob Crisp on tonight. I'm so excited. This is going to be fun. I learned so much. I even took notes last week, Bob. You know, I don't do that very often. <laughs> but, I mean, I don't mean I don't do that very I take notes a lot. I don't do that very often on this call because a lot of times I'm doing the call. So, last week I took a lot of great notes. And... I'm going to get that link up really quick, and then we'll get started here in about 30 seconds. It's so quiet. All right, I'm putting up this link. Hello, Heather. Hello. Hello. How are you? Hello, Tarzan. Hello, Lynn, how are you, baby? Melina, I saw that ugly mug of, oh, there's your ugly mug of a husband over there. Oh, my goodness. Hi, hi, Jamal. Hi, Gary Brooks. Hi, Bob Crisp, you beautiful man. Dana Skinner and Margaret. 
Joe Farina and Lorene Williamson. Good God, Judy. Privilege. There's the Young for Life people. Holy mackerel. There's Mark Stallings. <clears throat> Get yourself on camera, Mark. Noah Sigmund, you are a rock star. Thank you. Deborah, Nicolette, all you people. It is so yes. beautiful to see you already. And got a room full for you, Tom. What Look at that. that. Lorene's got a room full. Oh, my God, Lorene, you're a genius, man. She's got football players. She's got sale experts. She's got movers and shakers. I've never seen anything like it. The woman is unbelievable, unstoppable. I just wish she was going down to Australia and whipping Ken Smith and Jamal into sight for me. All right, I will. Yes, please, come on down. Oh, Lorene, we lost your... Yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Mark Stalin's in the basement. I'm happy for you. That's good. All right. Well, I just thought I'd turn it on so y'all can hear your fearless leader. Okay. So, Marianne, your job is to chase the yellow bar and, and turn down people that are talking. And let's get this show on the road. We've got the great Bob Crisp. Make sure you unmute him. All right. And thing on the road. Mute so. everybody again. Ready? Okay, here we go. Hang on. Okay, so here's the deal. If you want to, we, we want to hear from you. So if there's something you want to be trained on, think something you want to know, anything like that, we will be happy to do that. You can raise your hand. There's a little button on there to raise your hand. Or you can put a comment over in the chat bar. Denise is going to come on in a minute, and I don't know what happened to my hair. I think it looks like a. It looks like it. It looks like I tried to put that mousse stuff on, and then I was supposed to flatten it down, and I think I forgot to. So I think I've been running around all day long, looking like Pee Wee Herman, and that's just scary stuff. So, and thank God most of you young people don't know who Pee Wee Herman is. But the fact of the matter is. It's great to be alive. It's great to be working with a guy like Bob Crisp. I mean, he's a legend in network marketing, and we've got legends on here. I mean, from Lorene Williamson to the various people out there, let's get this show on the road. So, Bob, I know you've been preparing all day long. Margaret Bates, I love you. What do you want to talk about today, Bob? I, I, I've got some feedback for you. I can't even – there you are. What, what do you, what's your plan? What do you think today, my friend? What do you want to talk about? I want to, I want to talk about, Tom, I want to talk about why people quit and how we can stop the people from quitting. You know, we used to say, don't worry about the quitters. And, you know, the quitters are just going to quit. The haters are going to hate. The quitters are going to quit. But every single person I lost, I worried about. I cared about. It hurt me deeply inside when somebody got in, came to an event, introduced themselves to me, and next thing I know, they're gone. That disappoints me. And I think we can do a better job about uplifting people and making them feel more comfortable, making them feel more dynamic, making them feel that their possibilities for success are incredible as long as they have people like you and me. And the other three people on this call. Got that. How do we, I mean, what I want to make sure of is people on this call leave this call with their hair on fire saying, I've never seen more content in my entire life on how to, now we're going to talk tonight about staying in the business. So that's very, very cool retention. How do you do that, Bob? I mean, where does that reside? How do people actually learn to do that? Well, you know, that's a, that's a, it's a neck. You know, I said, uh, I think two weeks ago when we did this, uh, this call, I said, uh, you know, the business is 70% art and 30% science. Most people spend their, their life, their time on the science and never learn the art. You know, if I was within 100 miles of you, I'd be following you around like a puppy dog and I'd be watching what you do uh, as well as listening to what you say. Because yeah. there's, there's an art to being to being a people person, and uh, you know somebody said one time said uh, I love I want to do this because I love people. And I said, well, if you 
love people, then you're a better man than I am because I've been around people all my life and they're very difficult to love. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I had a guy, I, I sponsored a guy, Tom, in the business that was an architect. He designed the church that I was going to and, and became a good friend. And I signed him up in the Amway business. And uh, he had a wife that was very uh, kind of shy and, uh, and uh, he was a very outgoing kind of a guy, kind of guy would come to your church and, and sing a song and uh, do a solo and, and a very confident guy. And uh, so his wife one day was going to school and picking up uh, their son, who was about in the second or third grade, I guess, maybe fourth grade. And on the way home, uh, and, and he and his wife had been having some difficulty, financial problems and different things like that. And so the little boy said to his mom, he said, Mom, times are tough. Well, the, the mother was just distraught. She pulled out over the side of the road and buried her hand, head in the steering wheel and just bawled like a baby. And finally, she kind of recovered a little bit, and she looked at her son, and she said, uh, son, things will be okay. You know, we're, we're at going through a tough time now, but, but things will get better and, and things will be okay. And was reassuring his, uh, her son. And the little boy looked at her and said, no, mommy, times are tough. You know, six times six, five times four, you know, three times 18, you know what? <laughs> the times are tough, you know? So, so sometimes we, we, we overreact to what goes on and we, or we underreact, you know, and, and we take things for granted. Uh, you know, put them in, in, in my book, Raising a Giant, I talk about the first thing, put them in, keep them in, move them along. And those are the three major things that we have to do to be able to build a successful and sustain a, success, a successful business. Put them in, keep them in, and then move them along. If we can keep them in, we can get people to get connected, and it takes people some time. It takes people time uh, to, to get to trust you and, and, and let you in and share the real story because every one of us have our little, oh, this is our public story, our thing. Well, I'm, hey, everything's great. Really? Really? We, you know, they don't tell you, well, I'm three months behind on my car payment, and uh, I, I'm going to get laid off of my job, and, you know, my, you know, this, that, and the others going on in my life. They don't tell you the bad stuff. And they don't share with you until until you get to know them and they get to trust you. And I want to emphasize the fact that that uh, one of the great things about Tom and Denise is that they they engender trust. They they they, they, they I I don't know how you feel about them, but I, that's the way I feel about them. And I, I think that it's that it and it takes some time. When Tom was reminding me today on a call that it's been three years he's been messing around with me and you know, hoping I'd do something great, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of sitting around hoping I'll do something great too, you know, and so anyway, I think that, the, I think that, that building it in, now, now, now let, let, let me just say this, we get real, uh, uh, you know, focused on the idea that we're going to get somebody in the business and get them to be the product of the product. You've heard that before. Be the product of the product. We probably have all said that before. Product of the product. And we're so focused on the product that we don't get focused on the relationship between us and the person who's buying the product. See, my first, my first focus is how can I keep this person from getting uh, what Zig Ziglar said, SNIOP, S-N-Y-O-P, SNIOP, successful to the neg uh, susceptible to the negative influence of other people. Because you know that the first time they make a phone call, they're going to call somebody and they're going to say, how about come by my house? I got something I want to show you or come to a meeting or come to an event or come to a, a private business reception or whatever you call it, you know, and, and what they're going to do is say, well, what's this all about? Right? That's what the, what's this all about? This is not one of those uh, pyramid deals, is it? And, 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 and then what happens is of course, it's a friend and or a relative and, and the person that you just signed up in the business feels duty bound to tell them. Now they regurgitate everything and they, well, it's a pyramid, a pyramid deal, you know, and some people don't, you know, and it's out of, you know, San Diego and been around and this crazy doctor did that, dead, dead doctors don't lie and so on and so on. Next thing you know, they're trying over the telephone, they're trying to sell the deal, right? What happens? 
the person on the other end of the line takes the business away from them. So because they didn't get properly trained how to make a phone call. I, I listened to Tom tell a group down in Florida uh, not long ago how to, how to make a phone call. How, what, what do you say in the phone call? What don't you say? I, I sit down with people all the time. We've all been in, around the Amway guys, and the Amway guys tell you, don't tell them it's Amway. Don't tell them it's the same way. And of course, you know, we have a group of self-righteous people who think, well, that's dece that's deception. You know, I, I had a meeting in uh, Dallas, Tom, with 17,000 people in a reunion arena. I had them bring the house lights up. And I said, if you were invited to your first meeting and you didn't know it was Amway, stand up. 17,000 people. There weren't 10 people in the audience still seated. Everybody had come not knowing it was Amway. And I said, okay, sit back down. Sit down, and, 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 and if, if you would have come anyway, if you'd have known it was Amway, stand up. And there wasn't 10 people out of 17,000 people standing up. So in other words, what I said was this. So you would have made a decision based on your wrong information. And, and, and if, since the person didn't tell you it was Amway and you came and here you are, you know, five years later at one of these big crazy events here. So, so therefore, you would have made a, the wrong decision. What we have to do is get our people to understand you can't give out all the information over the telephone. Teach people how to hold back. One of the great things about it's my, I did a tape with, uh, with my upline Rick Setzer at his house one Wednesday night after church. He called the tape, it's my ship. And my whole principal point was, once you get into business for yourself, it's your business. It's your business. See, I said, this is my business. I invite who I want to, to see the business. I get to choose. They don't get to choose. I get to choose. I get to choose the people I do business with. I get to go to their house, invite them to my house. I get to run the business the way I want to run the business. Now, my upline told me I've, I, if I was going to be plugged into them, I was going to run the business the way they wanted it to be run. And I saw the benefit of that quite right away, you know. So their objectives became my objectives pretty quick. You know, alignments getting aligned with, with great people. You know, one of the reasons why I'm here, you know, is because I, I just like being aligned with that crazy Tom Chanel. I like that. It just, it's great. It makes me feel better for some reason. I don't know. And I like Steve and Michelle Wallach. I like the way that they run the company. And I like the way, you know, I like the products. And, the, and the who in the world hasn't listened to Dead Doctors Don't Lie? And you got to like the old man. He's a good guy. He's a really good, smart guy, way smarter than I am. So, you know, alignments. I like to be aligned, and I like to laugh. I like to be around people who don't take themselves too seriously. They'll come, and they cry when I cry, and they laugh when I laugh. That's what keeps people in, don't you think, Tom? I do, and here's what I'm, and here's what I'm hearing. And... One thing about this Tuesday, we're going to do our Tuesday night meeting in about 45 minutes. And our Tuesday night meeting looks like this. We go around and we make, it's like queen for a day. We introduce everybody. We find out what's going on with everybody. We try to figure out who the person in that room probably needs the most amount of help. That's such a close-up. It's about made ready to kill me. Uh, it's about, so the whole thing is, we go around for that for a couple of reasons. One, I, I need to know who's in a good place and who's in a bad place. And the second thing is, is I try to personalize these meetings at a level you can't believe because everybody is trying to get to a space where they're loved, where they're appreciated, where somebody cares about them. And I think that's me. I think, you know, today I went over to the office and I was sitting in there and I cold called for a long time for Amy Watson and a guy named Howard Burns. Trish Hetherington was there. Jackie Phillips was there. John Nodzikowski. So they all came to kind of watch the sideshow. But my entire job 
wasn't to pitch longevity at people. It was to love people and get related to them and show them somebody actually cared about them. And you know what? If you're going to try to keep people in your business, it's, it has a lot to do with the product. The products have to be great, but your relationship with them, your integrity, your follow-up skills are equally as important. And what I love about Ken Smith from Brisbane, Australia, Australia, or my friend Devin and Dylan Suggs down in San Antonio, Texas, what these kids do and what Ken Smith does is they stay on top of their people. They're following up, they're leading by example, and they're, st and, and they're automatically magnets for people. And just think about how much of a friend you're being. And I'm going to look at my phone right here today because it was a pretty crazy day. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some stuff to you because I'm on a new kick. And the new kick is calling old friends that I haven't, uh, Cindy Samuelson, I haven't talked to for years. Guillermo, Cor Guillermo, Michelle Bowens, Michelle Barnes, Howard Gum, Silence King, Duran Barnes, I'm real, I'm real, Isaac Carr, uh, Buck Steffens, Mike Tanner. I'm rolling through this list of people that Dennis Driscoll. Um, let's see who else I called. Mark Lubchenco. Haven't talked to him for years and years. Mike Trumpeter. I called him because his name sounded like Trump to me. My friend Doug Sykes. My friend Tara McChristopite went to Harvard. Uh, all these people. The reason I'm telling you that is because as I was driving through Denver, I keep telling Marianne and I keep telling Trish and I keep telling the people in Denver that they have, you know, to go make new friends. But the name of the game is to not forget your old friends in the process and your old friends love you. And it was astounding. I wish Amy was on here. She might be. If she is, I'd love to have her get on screen so she can pop up because it was absolutely hysterical because Howard Burns kept bringing up names and then I would reach into my phone and he thought he was all hip slick and cool and I would have their phone numbers with me and they would go holy mackerel so then we would call and unmute Trish and then we would call them and it was even funnier because these people still had my name in their phone from years ago. It was hysterical because they, I'm going, I wonder if this number still works. And they answered the phone, Tom. And it was just like I hadn't talked to him for a week, wasn't it, Amy? Yeah, it was cute. It was really cute. And Tom's got such a, I mean, um, the numbers and the names in your phone, you've got, you know, such a system to it that, um, you know, I, I'm, and I need to take note myself is that, um, you know, I'm bad about losing numbers or names or, you know, whatever, but it's something that's so simple that really um, can make a difference in, in your business. Yeah, and if you look down, this is my calls today. And I'm just going to show this to you because it's pretty telling. I take it personally when I'm in my phone, and you can just see there's very few people. There's very few. You can see a lot of names, but you see very few numbers. And the reason, the, and Howard Burns had me call a few people I didn't know from a company that was having some trouble today. But if you go through there, you're seeing almost all names. I take it personally when I have numbers in my phone and I don't have a name tied to it because I got the call and I didn't take the time to put them in my database and speak some notes about them. They took the time to talk to me on the phone. I need to respect that enough that I just go to notes and I talk about the conversation I had with them. And it's always great, because then I can call him back, this guy named Jerry Larder, who was a stockbroker with me many years ago. I was noticing something uh, in my contacts when I called him. It was really, really cool because he sent me a text 15 years ago telling me his dream in his life was getting his wife out of her job. And I sent him that text back 
and when we were talking to him about the keto bars, and I reminded him of how he was committed to pulling his wife out of the working world 15 years ago. And then I said, Jerry, is your wife still working? And it opened up the can because that's his dream in his life, not for him to retire. But I jumped into his dream from 15 years ago, 13 years ago, when he sent me that text in 2007. And so, and so the math is all wrong from what I'm talking about because I'm an idiot. But anyway, whatever it was, it was math years ago wise, but that's what happened. <laughs> Do not fact check me. Nothing adds up. So <laughs> whatever it is, I sound exactly like the debate on Monday night. And here's what I'm, and all you guys stop texting me because I'm finally going to tell you who I'm voting for. So it's not Donald Trump and it's not Hillary Clinton. I am voting, and I'm putting it out right now for Mary Lou Henner. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mary Lou Henner is not my candidate for president. My, she's my candidate to win Dancing with the Stars, and that's probably the only voting I'm going to be doing. So stop asking me. That's that simple. I'm sticking to that story, whether it's true or not. All right. So let's see what else. Cheryl's site is really going well. Making the, yeah, that's all cool. It is all cool stuff. We can do this. And Bob Crisp, you don't have any idea. He had over 400,000 people. I don't know how many, how many, and never mind. I'm not going to pull that number out. In 1976, how many people were in your business, Bob? About 200,000. 200,000 people in 1976 in right. Emily. Right. Right. In 1976, when it was a secret and network marketing was no fun. Here he, and he made hundreds of thousands of dollars per month. Here we are in 2000. 16, I got that one right. And it is unbelievable that we all are sitting in a place where we can't find three or four leaders to build our business. And I'm telling you, I talked to Ken Smith about this a minute ago. You know, you've got to be out there every day. Oh, I want to tell you a story. I'm going to, Bob, I know you're up there, but I'm going to talk for a minute. Okay. I recruit every day. And yesterday, Denise and I met somebody three years ago. And inside of that meet three years ago, we fell in love with this guy. And he was a great guy. He was making a ton of money with another company. And we developed a friendship. We never recruited him one time. In December, we were at an event, and there was something going on with him. And I noticed it, and I said, you know what? Something's going on with you. I'll leave the light on for you. He called me. He said, what was that all about? I told him. And eight months later of love with him and Denise, eight months later, they finally enrolled yesterday into Longevity. And the reason I'm telling you that story is this is not a sprint. It, was time, it wasn't time for them three years ago. It wasn't time for them in January. It was time for them in October of 2016. Had we pressed it in three years ago, or had we pressed it any time in 2016, I can promise you those people would have run like a rabbit because everybody's chasing them. The reason I tell you that is because if you've got enough people in your pipeline, there is absolutely no re you will never be that person that is looking desperate. Like most of you look, face facts. Most of you are, if you go to Eric Worre's book, Go Pro, he says something real succinct in that book where he says, man, I, I was at the point where I was at the end of the road. And if I didn't walk in a restaurant and have somebody look across the room, wave at me and say, I am a giant network marketer and I want to join your business, I was going to have to quit. That's what he said. But guess what? That is not going to happen to you. You've got to become skilled. And the way that you become skilled is to have two interviews a day, maybe one three-way call with your upline, just exactly like Bob Chris trains. So at the end of each month, you've got 60 human beings in your database who you want to serve. Not who you want to enroll, who you want to serve 
who you want to love and you want to be such a friend for them that when the time comes three years later on October, whatever the 10th, I have no idea what the date is. It's the 11th. It's Courtney, my daughter's birthday and Amy's in Dominic's. So at the end of the day, here it is the 10th yesterday, those people finally decided and that's what's going to happen to all of you guys when you have that many people in your pipeline. But you've got to build that pipeline, and it starts today. And that's only two interviews a day. And when I'm talking to people, I can re it's a litmus test for me because I sit down with them. I enroll them. I say, give me 100 names, 50 product users, 50 business builders, and we're going to talk about it tomorrow. And if they come in tomorrow and they've got two names, I know how serious they are. If they tell me that they can't interview two people a day because of whatever it is, you know, today it was really the, the, just the interaction in my office of who really wanted to interview and who really was, was like not wanting to. The key to this whole thing is the person who talks to the most people wins. The, people, the person who loves the most people wins. The person who has no agenda and goes into people's lives the most wins. And that's what you need to do. And I did that whole thing with my phone today when I was driving through Denver. I didn't do that for this call tonight. I didn't know Bob and I were doing it together today, early, in, earlier. I did that because I am, my mind opened up to all kinds of old friends in Littleton, Colorado. And once my mind opened up to that, all of a sudden, I started remembering, oh, my friend, Cal, my, my friend Cal talked to me about a coffee meeting I used to go to down in Starbucks uh, 13 years ago. And he said, you started something down there, Tom, that was unbelievable. And we still meet there for two hours every Thursday and Friday. Starbucks should have a plaque of you in that Starbucks. And so then I started thinking about who went to that coffee that we, we used to have 13 years ago. And it just, my mind started opening up with Bob Schwinn, with Tom Christopite, with Doug Sykes, with all these old guys that I've known forever. And I started calling them. And I don't even know if a few of them are even dead or not. But what was really cool about that is most of them have called me back today because I left them a voice message. And I'm going to find out what's going on with their life. And most of them are going to tell me they don't want to do network marketing. They know I'm a multi-level marketer. They, they don't. And I'm going to say, listen to me. I don't. I don't. I, I know you're doing business great at Driscoll Insurance, but I also know you know people that need me. They ha they need more health. They need more money. They need more time. I'm just asking you not to join me. You don't need to join me. I'm asking you because you know you're my friend for their names, so I can serve them because it might be time for them, even though it's not time for you. And you guys can do that all day long. So Bob, I really, I, I extended this for an hour, from a half an hour, so I wouldn't talk so much. And what I did was started talking and didn't stop, which is abysmal. And so back to you, buddy, sorry. Well, I thought I was just enjoying it, Tom. You did a great job, awesome. That's, you know, you, you're exactly right. I, I would. I would echo exactly what you said. You know, you there's one thing that came to mind very early in your in your uh, monologue there that I like, and and and, and that is that uh, that you know there's a different difference between being desperate and being relentless. See, see, see. Most people think of those two things are the same. They're not the same. See, appearing desperate is something that will never get you where you want to go. Never, never, never. You got to respect yourself. You got to respect their time. I, people say to me, all for the last 40 years, would you show the plan to this person or that person? And I said, maybe, maybe. You set up the appointment. We'll go sit down and have coffee with them. And if they answer the questions, my questions, the way I want to hear the answer, then I might show them the plan. They might get to see it. You know, the Bible says, cast not your pearls before the swine. You know, people got to earn the right to see the business. Not the other way around. See, most people approach it as beggars. The book of Psalms says, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the children of the king begging the streets. See, this is your, when you take pride, this is your business. This is the greatest business on the planet. And if you're lucky, 
I might show it to you. I might let you get in. And then if you're really lucky, I might work with you. I might even introduce you to my friend Tom, if you're lucky. See, to me, you've got to reverse the paradigm. And there's a difference between being desperate and being relentless. I am a relentless person. If I want you in my business, I'm going to get you. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. It may be next year. It may be 10 years from now, just like Tom was saying. But, but I'll keep at it. When I was, when I was uh, 16 years old, I loved basketball. I loved to play basketball. I went to a school in, in, in uh, Wilmington, California, which is a part of Los Angeles. We had 4,000 students in a, in a school that was designed for 1,500. They put out a call for basketball players, trying out. 600 guys showed up for the trial. 600. Two positions, one forward, one guard position available. I was six feet, barely six feet tall. I weighed 138 pounds. I had to jump around and shower to get wet. And, and so they, they put us in a line, walked us through the, the gym door, five, next five people on the court for the next three minutes against the varsity. My five, came, my, 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 my five came and I got on the court. I realized that the coach was looking only at the person with the ball. So the first thing I did was make sure, was toss the ball to somebody else and say, throw it to me. He threw it to me. I made a jump shot from 26 feet. Wow. And, and my, my first shot made it, didn't know nothing but net, 26 feet. Have you, ever, have you ever made one since? It <laughs> never made one sense. So, so then he said, I'm going to post the people who have made the cut. There'll be a, a list of 20 names on the bulletin board tomorrow out of 620. I went, as soon as it was posted, I went and looked. My name wasn't on the list. Ooh. So we showed up. They said, those 20 guys stand on the end line. I stood on the end line with those 20 guys. Coach called everybody's name. I'm still standing there. He says, who are you? I said, I'm Bobby Crisp. He said, your name isn't on the list. I said, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be on the team. He says, go stand with those guys. So I'll try it out again. He said, I'm going to post 10 names on the list tomorrow. Those guys made it. You should show up for practice. My name wasn't on the list. What did I do? I showed up for practice. 11 people standing on the end line. He says, Aren't you that Chris kid? I said, yep. He said, you didn't make it. I said, I'm here. I'm back. And I'm going to coach you. Everybody's entitled to a mistake. He says, go sit with those guys. So I went and sat with those guys. To make a long story short, seven days in a row he cut me from the team. Seven more days I showed up. The next day he gave me a jersey. I made the team. That's relentless. See, you keep showing up every day. You show up every time at Tom's meetings. You show up and sit on the front row every chance you get. You bring a prospect every chance you get. I had a guy in my group who had a ponytail down to his butt, and the only transportation he owned was a Harley Davidson motorcycle. Never, never missed a meeting. Showed up with people I would never, Tom, I'd never believe. He showed up with doctors and lawyers and all kinds of people showed up to sit with this kid. And he said, his dream was this. He says, I want to own a double wide trailer. I want to own six acres of land down there. I know Oklahoma, which is a hay capital of the world. And he said, I'm going to get married and I'm going to have a house full of kids. And as soon as I'm making $2,000 a month, I'm quitting. I'm going to retire. A year and a half later, I didn't see the guy anymore. <laughs> he did make his 2000. They said, well, he bought a double white. He lives down, a, you know, off of uh, Highway 33. <laughs> he got his dream. I was happy for the guy. He was ne Nobody will ever remember his name or even care who his ever is. But he had, he got his dream. And now I, I tell you, I've got a letter in my, in my file, Tommy, of a, of a, of, from a people from Olathe, Kansas. A little couple that was in my business, and they they, uh, they sent me a letter two years after they got in. They said uh, we didn't get in to Amway for um, 
motor homes and, and big big homes and fancy jewelry and you know fancy cars and stuff like that. We got into Amway because our, our little girl was born with the spinal bifida or something like that, one of those badly diseases. They said she'd never walk. They said she'd never ride a tricycle. They said she'd never go to school. Never feed herself. We have a nurse that comes every day for eight hours a day that takes care of her. And they said we got into Amway so we could pay her. Wow. By the way, here's a picture of our little girl on our brand new tricycle. See, those are the stories that you tell. Those are the things that people relate to most. You know, we big shots, you know, we drive around in our well, we're all out of four or five Rolls Royces and all that other stuff and live in these big houses and, you know, and wear Rolex watches and so on and so forth. But you know what matters? Most, most of the time, by the way, when I had a, a 25 cars, I drove my pickup truck. Little Chevy Love pickup truck most of the time. You know why? Because I didn't want people to think that I thought I was something special. And that's a great thing about Tom. Tom is so good at, at let, making people understand that he doesn't prefer to be treated like a king, although it's quietly we both know he does. Is 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 but, but you know, he's so such a common person. And listen, there's a lot of common people on this call, right? I can see your faces. You don't look uncommon to me. You look and I'm sure you're looking at me and saying, what did that fat guy ever do? I get it. I got it a long time ago when I was young and good looking. But you know what happens, people, when you connect with them? What Tommy's talking about in his monologue versus my monologue <laughs> is he's talking about people that connect with you and they stay connected over the years. You know, when you do the opposite thing that most people think you're going to do, See, most people think you're going to get mad. They say, you know, I, I love you anyway. I love you anyway. And I'll bet you're going to do great in whatever it is that you do. And if you ever need me, give me a call. I'll be there. That's what Tom does. That's what Denise does. That's what the great ones almost always do. You know, that's the great thing about this is, would you like to put me to work with for you? So again, goes back to we think that people who come in down line, this is the one of the worst things you can do, that they work for you. <laughs> we work for them, you idiot. You know, up line works for down line. It doesn't work the other way. This is, that is, we don't get paid for that. We get paid because we work for them. That's the way it works. Why wouldn't you be proud of that? Of all the things we'll see, the problem with the prospect is the prospect thinks that we're trying to get them to work for us, don't they? The general opinion of the people who are negative about multi-level marketing have it all wrong. They think that we're trying to get them to come work for us. And what we're really trying to do, I'm applying for a job. I'd like to have a job working with you and helping you. I'd like to argue, Paul, I said this three weeks ago, I said, it's an argument. Here's the argument. The argument is, I agree with you. I, I was broke. I've been broke many times, over and over and over again. I've been broke. You know, but I've never been poor. Poor is permanent. Broke is temporary. What I want to do is put my skills, whatever they are, to work for you. Hey, listen, if I came and slept on your couch for the next 30 days, and I took your prospect list, how well do you think I would do with it? If Tom Chenault came and slept on your team and used your prospect list, I'll bet you it'd do a lot better than you are with it. Same people, same prospect list. See, you got to get as good, sharpen your axe, sharpen your axe. I was walking down the corridor of, the, of DFW Airport with a buddy of mine named Al Culbertson and uh, a good looking. Uh, Flight attendant came on. That's that's a better looking picture than mine. I'm telling you right now. But but a good looking flight attendant was walking the other direction, and Hal was a single guy. And I, next thing I knew, Hal wasn't work, walking with me. He was walking with the flight attendant. And he says, uh, 
And he Ken comes back, he's got a piece of paper. He says, I got her name and I got her telephone number. And I said, really? You, why would you do that? And he said, got to always sharpen your axe. That's sharpen. Cool. So Denise, you know? go ahead. <laughs> Denise, you are not a Bob Crisp. You're not a Tom Chenault. You are a, you are a Denise Chenault who wasn't born in this business. You kind of came into it kicking and screaming. And true story, don't con a con. And <laughs> at the end of the day, you are like one of the best network marketers I've ever seen. And there is a question up above from somebody that says, how do you get out of your own way and talk to people no matter what? Which you have a doctorate in. And it's just, you know, one thing about you, you, you do lead with your heart and you do what's going on for them. So talk about that a little bit, will you? Well, it's so funny because uh, yeah, Lindsay, you're right. I was taking notes. I mean, such wisdom from Bob Crisp. I, I just, uh, I mean, I'm just in such gratitude for for him and 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 all of his wisdom. Because I'm telling you, every time I hear Bob talk. Uh, you know, I, I just get so much and, and just, you know, a couple of things that really struck me is, you know, he's right that most people who are not in this profession think that we're trying to get people to work for us and they've got it all wrong. They don't realize that we work for them. And that's so, that's like, that's, that's so true. They're trying, they think that we're trying to get them to do something, right? Um, so that was just, that was like an aha moment, as Oprah would say. And, um, and then the, 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 the desperate versus unrelenting is, is another one. And I think going to your question, Tom, um, it, you know, especially at the beginning, when you've got a rent check to pay, you know, rent bill to pay, when you've got to get, put food on the table, you know, at the beginning, if you are desperate to make a commission in order to be able to survive, it's really hard to not have that desperation. And um, it takes everything you got to have faith that you will that you will be able to do this and provide for your family. You know. Um, because that energetically, when you come across desperate, it's very hard to cover up. It's very hard to cover up. And, um, and people feel it, you know. And so, but when you come from a place, like Tom was saying, this is not a sprint, it is a marathon. And, and when you come from the place, and Bob said this as well, where you know that you are building a relationship for life, and a no today um, does not mean a no forever, um, you know. And and so when you come from that place of truly serving others, then hopefully that desperation goes by the wayside, and and you can come from a place of of, of service and relationship. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's just, it really is all about ha building an authentic relationship and, and serving others. And, you know, I mean, today I, I just have such gratitude for so many things in my life. And, you know, when Tom was talking about his list of who he called today, I mean, I really made an effort because something struck me over the last couple of days of expressing gratitude to people around me and, you know, and coming from a certain, you know, for instance, I had to go, I was, I was mailing a couple of things. Some of them were product samples. Um, another was a gift to, to someone who just enrolled. And, uh, and I was standing in line at the post office. 
And another friend walked in behind me and she was a couple behind, you know, people behind and she was like, oh, I hope we get through this line quick enough. I got, I need to go pick up my daughter. And she had just one small package and I go, well, give it to me. I'll mail it. You know, I'll stand in line. You go pick up your daughter. And she was like, really? And I go, yeah, <laughs> like I'm standing in line anyway, you know, and it's those small things. And it seriously, it cost me $2 and 60 cents to mail the package for her, you know, but it's, it's those teeny tiny things that people remember. And, and, and that will come back around. Um, so it really is, it's just about relationship building and um and who you present yourself to be in this world and i think that when you continually uh just serve people um without this uh you know agenda behind it it all works out so there's my monologue <laughs> all right we we got a mute her now bob unmute your phone you did a great job denise anybody want to say anything i mean I love you people and we are doing this for you. And the more input that we've got, if you wanna speak, let us know. Uh, so many of you are giving me sidebar comments. There's just, you know, speaking to people, if you're interested instead of interesting, you don't have to think about what to say because you're asking questions about their life. And you know, I watch Molina Briggs and the success that she's had all over the world. And it just, I'm in awe of that because she's building, she is in Hawaii, she's building in Australia, she's building on the mainland US, all through relationships. I look at little Lanny and never once do you see Lanny Sharp not having a room full of people when she's doing the meeting. And this morning, Marianne had some uh, issues uh, over and above Marianne's normal issues. And as a result of that, she, uh, she couldn't get on and it was so amazing watching Lanny just put on her spikes and getting on the in the game it was it, it was so gratifying because you guys are all one team one dream you're so good at pitching up at pitching in as you know Victoria Barron has kind of taken a little bit of a, a relaxation break and I am so happy about that because she's given her soul like Linda Tyler and Andrea for so long and all I want to do is, you know, just acknowledge her and all of you for the great work you're doing. So I know we don't have a lot of time left. Has anybody, I'm looking all here for all the stuff that you're doing here. And, you know, Denise does have a servant's heart and she is an astoundingly great woman. But so are all of you. And James Earl Moore, I see you're out there with your dad. I hope that you are getting that worked out with your father. I admire you deeply for going going out there and helping your dad who is elderly and is getting clipped by some people and you jumped on an airplane and went and saw him because you can. But all of us, all of us are in this thing and we're all in it together and nobody is immune from problems. We think we've got it going and then God with his great sense of humor throws something into it. But let's just keep locking arms and doing big things for each other and let these other people with the debates and other things do things to each other. We are, uh, yeah. So if Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton were locked on a deserted island, who would win? The American people. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was, I heard that joke today. It was pretty funny. So anyway, if you had to teach him, Emma, no, buy Bob Cripps books, two books, Raising a Giant, Feeding a Giant. If you don't want to buy that, call uh, Get GoPro by Eric Worre. It's a very short, great encapsulation of network marketing. I love that book too. We give those away. Lindsay Steele Grimes, I want you to call Marianne Niehaus after this or message her and uh, she'll send you a free copy of Raising a Giant on me. Oh, you have it. Well, you have, which one do you have? 1-800-READ-IT-AGAIN. Okay, yeah, good, read it again. And Marianne's still gonna send you a copy of GoPro. So this is what we're doing here. So this is fun stuff. Anybody else got a question?
<laughs> now, just a comment, Tom. I want to thank you guys for this. This is absolutely amazing. And uh, I just want to say to my good friend Bob there in the... He did a, an amazing job, and even if he brings out another book next week, I won't buy it because I haven't learned everything in the first two yet. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And you know that I read these things over and over again, and you can't believe the way that Denise does take notes. She is absolutely a beast, and I'm watching Judy writing down notes, and Lorenzo and Leah. You guys are all, you taking notes. Yeah, that is so awesome seeing you guys paying attention. And I like this gallery view at the top so I can watch. I can tell who's paying attention and who's dozing. You know, I can see Joe Farina doing what he's doing and Sharon and Richard Nuzzi, my buddy down in Florida. It is so cool. It is so, so cool watching all of you grab your destiny. So, we're here to help you with everything we've got. I don't see, I mean, Bob, I know you've got a closing argument. Why don't you come on and talk to us a little bit about getting out of here and just people, how do you, what do you do now? So here's where we are. I'm standing here right now. I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do between now and next Tuesday to further my business. Like, no kidding. Like, I am going to further my business come heck or high water. I know I can't build this business just watching webinars with Tom and Bob. What am I doing between here and next Tuesday, Bob, that's going to move my fit? What? Yeah, that's it. Do well, it. Well, you know, Tom, one of the things that we should probably spend a whole hour on very soon is scheduling. How do, how do you work the business in the beginning? And then how do you divide it? You know, put them in, keep them in, move them along. So as your business gets bigger, your responsibilities get broader. And in the beginning, you know, Dexter Yeager said this. Now, again, if those who don't know who Dexter Yeager is, Dexter is the largest income earner ever in the history of network marketing. Nobody is close. Nobody. Number two is 100 million back, at least. So Dexter is the biggest income earner ever. Short little guy, five foot five, five foot six inches tall. Spoke with a lisp and stuttered, you know, fifth grade education. Nobody can do it. I mean, you know, if, they, if he could do it, anybody could do it, right? Dexter said this, you can only work three groups at a time. Now, that's the biggest and the best. He said, if you're doing the business correctly, you can only work three groups at a time. Build three legs at a time. Now, Personally, I agree with that. I mean, I, I, I tried to build three legs a year. And in, in my pro progress over the first five years I was in the business, I built 15 legs, which made me, a, if you were an Amway, makes made me a triple diamond. And all 15 of those legs were qualifying when I, when I sold my business. Now, so you got to know that you, if you're going to work your first, your biggest leg three nights a week. Now, this is if you're really committed. Your biggest leg, you're going to be in your biggest leg of those three, three nights a week. Not your weakest. See, the way most people think in this business is, I'm going to leave the strong ones to themselves, and I'm going to go work with the weak. So what you find is this. Later on, two weeks from later, three weeks from then, the strong legs become your weak legs. And the weak legs now become your strong legs. Because the secret, and when you're building a business, the secret is you. You're the, you're the swizzle stick that mixes the drink. See, I may not be the end-all, be-all for everybody, but I'm the guy that makes the drink. I'm the one that makes the drink. Tom is still the leader of the organization. He's still the in the organization. Right? So between now and next, you've got to organize your time. This is a large country. Out of plan a year. What, is, what, is, what do you do in December that's different than what you do in July? What, is, what do you do in, in, in September? that kicks off the fall season. What should you be thinking about now as we're looking at the holiday season is coming right up six or eight weeks now we'll be in Thanksgiving from Thanksgiving to Christmas. People live, they, they like to decorate and play, right? But if you're a new, if you're a newcomer and you are, are just now building some momentum, can you afford to take six weeks off? Honestly, can you? Tom can, I can, but you can't. Because you're just now building the, the, the nucleus to your business. 
you're not showing and demonstrating the commitment when you take the time off. You know, I, I take a lot of time off. Tom takes a lot of time off. But you know what? We don't advertise it. You know why we don't advertise it? Because we don't want you to to uh, uh, to, to do it at this state in your, in your business. The day will come. Remember the little saying, I will do today what others won't so I can live tomorrow as they can't. See, when my, my upline, they, they fell in love with me a little bit, and they said, hey, why don't you take some time off and go down to Fountain Blue in Miami? We'll get them aside, lay on the beach, everybody else is freezing. And I go, yeah, well, that sounds kind of like good advice if I was a triple diamond, but I'm not. So I'm not going to take your advice. I'm not going to go down and play with you at the Fountain Blue. What I'm going to do is go back to Tulsa where it's cold, and I've got five kids that need to be fed, and I'm going to go work my ass off. Because one of these days, you guys are going to look up, and I'm going to be saying to you, how is the fountain blue? And I'm going to be wearing the same pin you've got. And I'm going to be the one taking a, a million dollars off that mountain every month. You see, again, the, the, the new people in the business are at a different stage. Be careful that you're not duplicating the wrong thing at the wrong time. I advise the newcomers, the ones getting some traction, to stay in the trenches. After I made Diamond and Amway, I, I talked to other diamonds and double diamonds and triple diamonds, and I, we went to events, and I said, so what should I do now? And you know what their advice was? 100% is what their advice was, Tom. Keep working. Stay in the trenches. Work, work your butt off day and night because you've got the momentum. You've got the mojo. You've got the magic. You're on a roll, man. You know, and what my advice to you is when you're on a roll, keep it on a roll. When you got the guy down and almost on the canvas, hit him again and then hit him again and then hit him again. And then when he gets up, knock him back down again. See, that's the, when I talk about relentless, and you know I'm using that as a metaphor, right? <laughs> We're not going to fight. But, but the world is full of people that need to see the activity. See, one of the great things that Tom did tonight that impressed me the most is he talked about and showed you, proved that he spent that time on the phone today. He said, he basically said, he didn't say this, but he basically said, I dare you to outwork me. <laughs> you got to love a guy who'll do that, right? You got to love him, right? He, he didn't say, I dare you to outwork me. He just showed you his schedule and said, I dare you to outwork me. I'll take the dare. How about you? God bless you. And and Ken Smith, you will buy my book. I got a new book coming out, Giant Consequences, and it's a stem winder. It's a really, really good book. I haven't printed it yet because I keep writing in it. <laughs> I've read it myself three times. It is a really, really good book. It's pretty good whenever I think it's a good book. It's a spellbinder. What'd you call it? A spellbinder? Stem winder, man. It's a stem winder. What the heck? Hey, Bob, you, you're right. You're right. I will buy it, but I will learn what, everything that's in the other two completely first, but I will buy it. All right, man. I know it adds to your pension fund, my friend. I've got to do that for you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for Tom's new book as well. Yeah, you may have a long wait. I, I... I'm trying to get time to let me help him with that book. <laughs> I'm a little slow on the uptake. Sorry about that. Uh, I've got one that I've got just about to come. Well, no, it, it isn't. It's on procrastination. <laughs> I eventually will write it. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> All right, everybody, we got to go do our Tuesday night meeting. I want you to challenge yourself. Challenge yourself to register for the convention. Challenge yourself to, to host a virtual training of your own at your house. Challenge yourself to do a one, maybe a home meeting and a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Break out of that fear. I mean, you'd be astounded at what my friend, my wife, my buddy, my partner, we're scared to death to do some stuff. You, you'd be astounded. I mean, I don't know how, it, it, it's, and you got to break out of that, don't you, honey? I mean, it's, it's I'm going to unmute you. But it's something that we do. I mean, we have to do that. And every one of of us were stopped somewhere, but the freedom is busting through it to the other side of the stop. I promise you, you will thank me. You will thank me. You will thank me. 
Mark Stallings, I know you're giving it everything you've got, man. And I'm in awe of you and your guts. So every one of you, Deborah, thank you. All of you that commented, Joe Farina, Lindsay, I love you. Sharon, thank you. Deborah, Lanny, all you, I'm just scrolling through. It is magic watching what you guys do. And we'll see you next week. Bring your people to this. Let Bob Chris train them and Denise and Ken Smith and everybody else. Marianne, you're the greatest quarterback on the field. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you all next week. Thank you, guys. Love you. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Bob. We had over 50 people. That's great. Brandon, right now. See you later. You will now enter the contest.